Good morning, comrades. Good morning. So great to see everybody. Uh, happy, happy Sunday. What a great meeting. Yeah. I mean, uh, wonderful, wonderful meeting. I think uh, Justine came up to us yesterday and said, Joe, we're going to be able to uh, take the video that's been shot and, you know, produce it professionally and share it uh, so that people can uh, look at and listen to the rich lessons and experiences. And, you know, it's a great idea, you know, that we should do that. Of course, uh, in keeping with our pledge yesterday to uh, talk to the uh, people who we would uh, put on that video and get their permission uh, that they be uh, shown publicly. We don't want to put nobody on Front Street that don't want to <laughs> don't want to uh, uh, be there. Um, but really, a uh, wonderful, wonderful meeting, and I'm not quite sure what I can contribute to it. Uh, this is the second time I think since the convention that the Labor Commission has met in person. Um, I'm not sure about that. I think the first time was in North Carolina. Lori, wasn't it uh, North Carolina? <laughs> came to North Carolina. Um, and uh, the idea, Steve, was to take the show on the road, uh, wasn't it? <laughs> How long ago was that? Three years ago, four years ago, something like that. Lord have mercy, that's a long time. Um, we were going to take the show to the Midwest and then to the South and and then to the uh, West Coast. But then uh, COVID happened and all of those plans kind of went out the uh, window. But the work of the Labor Commission didn't go out the window. We tried to respond to the uh, pandemic. Remember that? And and the rise in unemployment that uh, took place. And we, we tried to draw uh, lessons from the experience of the party during the 1930s and tried to uh, respond to the unemployment was 12, 13, 14%. And we wanted to do something about it. So we tried to form unemployment councils. and. And, and that experience was a little bit mixed, uh, actually. There were positives and, and, and negatives. And, and, and one of the big positives was that we held a national town hall meeting on unemployment. And it was one of the biggest and best things that we did. In fact, um, there's a big dispute in the party now uh, between the Labor Commission and the international department, because the international department is saying that the conference that they held on imperialism is the biggest and baddest and best conference that the party ever held. And, and we said, no, that's not true. Y'all got a short memory. The town hall meeting on unemployment was the biggest, the baddest, and the best. And we got the figures to prove it. And they said, no, nah, no, nah, you know, Figures lie, liars figure, and uh, <laughs> but it's a friendly, comradely socialist competition, you know. And, and there were many other positives that uh, came out of that initiative. And one of the most important things that the party has to do is take initiative, and and uh, and one of those positives, you know, the the party we, we've been saying for some time that. Our goal is uh, to, we're rebuilding the party in, in many ways uh, and rebuilding its relationships, you know? Um, and, and one of the things that, that, that we did during that time was to try to rebuild our relationships uh, with sections of the uh, trade union movement that we had not been in contact with in some time. Um, and I remember uh, Ibrahim, you used to talk about that, that in in Albany, the club 
as part of that movement, began to reach out to the labor movement to ask the unions to form unemployment councils because that's where the, that, that formation ought to grow out of. And, and they did that, right? And uh, one thing led to another. And now Ibrahim uh, is the president of the Central Labor Council in the capital area of New York, in Albany, yeah. which has the highest concentration. Of... And, and that's some really outstanding work. Uh, congratulations, comrades, for that. Uh, uh, and others of us, however, had uh, already had uh, connections. We heard from Cooper yesterday, who was uh, in uh, in uh, Sioux Falls, uh, South Dakota, and later got elected to the state federation. And uh, Comrade Mark Fromke, we ain't heard much uh, except for this morning when he took a I, I don't know why we haven't heard from you, Mark. Mark likes to talk. And, uh, yeah. Uh, but Mark is active in, in the uh, leadership of the Minnesota Dakotas uh, AFL-CIO. And, and one of the things you should know about Mark is that he is one of the uh, best uh, connected communist trade unionists in the country. He knows everybody and has, uh, really it's true, and, and uh, has uh, everybody on his speed dial and 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 that's an important thing, both personally and politically, and uh, for in, in terms of helping out the party and individual comrades in their uh, life challenges. Uh, and then Scotty uh, talked yesterday uh, about the uh, election of himself and Denise Weinbrenner uh, as uh, the leaders of the uh, steelworkers retirees. You know. Uh, occurred during this period, around the time of the pandemic. And, and that's a big thing, you know, public, well-known communist leading sore, you know. I know it's a big thing because, as Joe said, I come from a family of steel workers. Uh, my dad and my brothers worked in the mills, grandfather worked in the mills, and and, and during the 50s, late 50s and 60s, they tried to drive my dad out of the union, out of the mill. He wasn't even a member of the party, married to a communist, but he wasn't a, a left-wing, militant, African-American trade union his civil rights fighter. They didn't, they didn't want him. It changed. As the Cold War began to thaw, it changed. But nevertheless, that was, that was uh, his uh, experience. And... Uh, um, and, and and the point I'm trying to make, comrades, is that the doors now are wide open for uh, communist trade unionists to play a public open role in, in the trade union movement. Uh, and, and if anything, this meeting has convinced uh, me, I mean, I believed it before, but if I needed additional proof, this <laughs> meeting convinced me that 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 this is possible, the doors are wide open for 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 all of us, and and uh, uh, I didn't have to tell you that because you're proving it by your work, and so thank you very much, and congratulations for that activity. You know. Um, the, the National Board and, and National Committee of the Party, uh, we have a request, a proposal that we want to put before the uh, a Labor Commission. Uh, in fact, uh, Comrade Steve uh, mentioned part of it in, in his wonderful contribution yesterday. Um, and you know, the the role of the of commissions in the party is twofold, two responsibilities. One is to help build the party and build the movement in the respective areas where you're working. That's the first thing. And, and the second thing is to help us understand what is taking place within those movements, you know, uh, to 
to help us think through, to generalize, and, and on the basis of that generalization to help us theorize that, uh, that work. Um, and, and, and so in the first place, the role and responsibility of the Labor Commission should be to help build the party in the labor movement, you know? Um, but not only that, not only that, the, the role and the responsibility of the Labor Commission should be to help uh, the uh, labor movement and the working class movement in general fight for its leadership, um, its leadership up and down the line, its leadership not only of the class struggle, which of course it has to do, but of the struggle for democracy generally. That's, we, we stand for the leading role of the working class in general in the fight for a new society. Isn't that the case? I mean, we, we support the uh, People's Front uh, against the MAGA right, uh, but in particular, we fight for the leading role of the working class in leading that front. Isn't that the case? I mean, we support the uh, uh, struggle for women's abortion rights in general, but in particular, we support the uh, right of working class women to lead that fight. And so too for the civil rights movement, uh, the, the movement for immigrant rights, LGBTQ rights, we fight for the uh, responsibility and, and ability of the workers of those communities to lead those uh, movements. Um, so that's the first part of the responsibility that we, that the National Committee requests of our uh, commission. Build, build unity, build our strength, build our fighting uh, capacity. The second uh, uh, request that we want to make is that you uh, help us as we begin to prepare for the convention, think through where is the labor movement at this part, point in time? Where, where are we? You know, Roberta uh, raised the issue in her excellent presentation, tracing the history of the party yesterday. Uh, she, she called on us to bring the disparate parts AFL-CIO, Change to Win, these independent formations, ALU, the Starbucks workers, let's, let's bring them all together. But in order to do that, we have to have an assessment of, of where the labor movement stands. And, and, uh, and, and, and so when Steve was talking about writing a, a, a resolution yesterday for our convention, he was gently suggesting that we uh, come together and 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 pool our ideas and and develop a common approach. Um, and now I'm going to say something that may get me in a little bit of trouble, but that's all right. I've been in trouble before. We don't necessarily have, I understand, a uh, there are different points of view in the commission with respect to where the labor movement stands, you know? And that's okay, you know, that's that's all right. I mean, some people um, think that the uh, uh, new leadership in the AFL-CIO is doing just fine, you know? And, and others are not so sure. And, and, um, and some people think that these independent formations are the way to go and, and others, uh, I'm not so sure about that. I think that they need to be linked to the larger unions and so on and so forth. And uh, and 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 speaking of this new leadership, you know, um, I can, I think Rosana and I can say from experience that that it's a a difficult challenge for a new leadership to gain its footing. Um, in a uh, in a uh, organization that is not accustomed, it's it's a difficult challenge anyway. No matter who you are, 
Um, but in, in particular, if you are a woman and you have a woman who is the leader of the AFL-CIO now and an African-American, it's a difficult thing for uh, them to, uh, how do you say, uh, gain their sea legs to, to establish their leadership uh, because men do not necessarily accept the leadership of women. I mean, it's true. And, and um, white folks don't necessarily accept leadership from people of color. I mean, y'all saw what happened down in Mobile the other day, didn't you? You know what that was about, don't you? Yeah. That was about a man, an African-American who had responsibility for that dot telling some good old boys to move their goddamn boat. And they said, who is this black man telling me what to do with my boat? Well, he's the dude who's responsible for the port. What was at stake there? They did not accept his leadership. You see what I'm talking about? And so you have a situation now in, in, in the AFL-CIO where you have a new leadership who are struggling to gain their uh, footing. And that takes time, you know, because people don't know what, uh, what to expect of them and whether or not they have a track record and, and uh, are they going to be able to prove, uh, prove their worth. You know, Mark Fromke likes to say that uh, uh, the good thing about the AFL-CIO is that Everybody's at the table, right? You know? And he said, Joe, do you know what the bad thing is about the AFL-CIO? Everybody's at the table. Everybody's at the table. And so finding your way in a situation is not an easy, right. not an easy proposition. Um, but it's extremely important that our commission come together. Uh, and 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 discuss uh, our different views with respect to what is taking place in the trade union movement. Uh, find the common points of uh, agreement, uh, and and let me say this, and and to do it in a collective, comradely way. Collectivity uh, is extremely important, you know. And, and that means, comrades, um, keeping the discussion in the commission while you work out your different points of view. Um, it means keeping the discussion um, uh, on an objective basis. Um, it means not stepping outside of the commission while you're thinking through how to, how to bring it together. That means you, you don't uh, tweet about it, you know? Um, you don't uh, take it into your club meeting while you're still discussing it in the, um, you don't uh, necessarily wanna uh, get into a big debate about it on Telegram or on, uh, on uh, 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 Signal or any of these other chat groups, you know? We have had very uh, troublesome experiences in the tone of discussion that take uh, on discord and, and uh, where, where in particular men, you know, act like they know everything, talk down to women, talk down to people of color, characterize somebody as this kind of revisionist and that kind of opportunist and, and uh, uh, call folks everything but a child of God, you know? And, and, and it, it's not the way for us to carry on. A, uh, so so uh, we would hope that the Labor Commission set some guidelines for the discussion, uh, put together the different points of view uh, and, uh, help us prepare a, a, a resolution that, that will lead to developing a, a trade union program for the party. That's what we need, you know? 
that's what was done 20, 30 years ago after, um, I don't remember if it was before or after John Sweeney became the president of the AFL-CIO. And Scott Marshall and, and Roberta and uh, George Myers and others uh, put out a trade union program called Fresh Winds. And, 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 and they were talking about what uh, the uh, uh, newly emerging uh, leadership in the trade union movement that resulted in Sweeney's election uh, was that they were beginning to break up the Cold War ice, you know? And one of the great things that that leadership did was they got rid of the anti-communist clause in the, in the Federation. And so people who were no, had, had, had been forbidden to hold office in the unions were now able, able to bring, breathe, breathe free. And, 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 and the title of that uh, program was the fresh winds are blowing. Well now, comrades, those winds are blowing, blowing white hot. And so it's time for the Labor Commission to, to put forward that program that will, they will help the party and that will help the broader trade union movement chart a path, path forward. Um, uh, and so we hope that you'll do that uh, as, we, as we prepare for the convention. I am very happy uh, this morning to let you know uh, that our convention is set for June 7th, 8th, and 9th next year here in Chicago at Roosevelt University. June 7th, 8th, and 9th. Yeah. 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 At Roosevelt University here, that's down in the loop. Uh, and we wanna thank Comrade John Bechtel, who was member of our national board and national committee for doing the groundwork to, to make that, uh, sticking with it because, you know, we, 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 we thought we had it at another place and they had said yes and even put it in writing. And they turned around and said, oh no, we made a mistake. And, uh, and then we had another place and they said, oh, I forgot, we're not gonna be able to make your reservation until next November. And uh, but John stuck with it, and and now we uh, have those uh, those dates, and we have begun already the march towards our convention. And 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 then you know, comrades, there are a number of way stations on the road to the convention. The first was the uh, national committee meeting that was held a couple of weeks ago in 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 New York, which. Uh, kind of set the broader political framework for the uh, uh, convention. Second way station is this meeting, you know. Um, this meeting, and I would also add to that as a subcategory, the, the preparations that we and others in the broader labor and democratic movement made for the uh, UPS strike, you know. Um, and uh, the third, Third way station um, will take place in a couple of weeks uh, on August 26 in Washington, D.C. at the 60th anniversary march commemorating uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, March on Washington. And you know, this uh, will be the first national demonstration since the Supreme Court outlawed affirmative action. Um, and, and the call has been made to show up uh, in big numbers in Washington uh, that uh, Saturday or Sunday on the 26th. And we were trying to find out, you know, what was happening with the march and, and over the last few days, you know, it's, we're beginning to hear that it's starting to gain traction. We heard uh, from Laura, Steve, that the UAW is starting to organize in Detroit. 
and uh, one of the big churches and with the assistance of Sharpton's National Action Network is beginning in, in Detroit. And, and, uh, and I heard that here in Chicago, the United Church of Christ uh, is uh, organizing uh, and, and the same thing in Philadelphia. But most of that march is gonna come from the East Coast, you know what I'm saying? From New York, Philly, Baltimore, DC, Virginia, North Carolina and so on, and so, just because of the geographic proximity. I even called my hometown, you know, in Youngstown, and man, one of the big African-American churches is organizing uh, for the uh, uh, march. Um, and I want to make this point, comrades, the, the uh, preparation for our convention, which is largely an internal event where we'll be refreshing our leadership and fine-tuning our politics and program and all of that kind of thing, uh, but we cannot see it as an internal event only. This is a convention that has to be built in the course of the major struggles that are taking place in the country, you know? It has to be a convention built in the strike waves that are taking place, you know? It has to be a convention built in, in the fight against the MAGA right. And if we're not doing that, then you gotta have, what are we doing? And this is, this is the point uh, that I think Frank Chapman, was trying to, to make yesterday when he talked about the, the importance of the labor movement um, addressing the fight for democracy, you know? And Frank made the point that, that there is uh, uh, no road to socialism that takes place outside of the struggle for democracy and equality for Black folk for Latinos, for immigrants, for, uh, for women, for LGBTQ rights. There, in, in fact, our program argues that any other path that, out, that, 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 that sees a, uh, a road to socialism outside of the fight for democracy is politically, it's not only wrong, but politically indefensible. And, and Frank was trying to make the point that, that the left in, here in Chicago recognized that, and therefore they, they joined the campaign of uh, a, a, a unionist, a, a, a militant, progressive trade unionist, Brandon Johnson for the office of the mayor. What do you call that, the mayorality? In, 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 is that the right word? In, in the city of Chicago. One thing that didn't come out as clearly yesterday in that presentation was the connection between that race and a race that took place a couple months earlier. And that was the fight to uh, elect a uh, civilian control board of Chicago's police department with teeth. And that was to, to in fact have for the first time in this country in history, community control of the police. And that was a, a so that black people, uh, Latinos, Asian, white working people would have control of, of, of uh, they would have uh, grassroots control over hiring and firing and funding and disciplining the police force. That's a hell of a thing, you know? And, and, and by the way, the whole concept of community control of the police emerged in the 1960s, put forward by the Black Panther Party. You see, that's where that came from. You see, and Frank and, and, and the Alliance grabbed hold of that and built a movement around it. And, and what happened in the second round of the mayor's election is that Johnson and, and others in the teachers union recognized that 
And those two campaigns merged. Their get out the vote apparatus merged. And those 20,000 door, knock, door knocks that Frank was talking about, that's who did it, you see? And that's what won that election. That's what won that election. And so we need to draw that lesson. This party has to, has to, in the course of the next year, get deeply involved in every single working class and people struggle that's available to us. And we have to use the tools that are available, not the tools that we wish were there. We, we wish there was an independent party of labor, you know, that could act as a intellect, but that party doesn't exist yet. And so we have to use the, the vehicle that exists now to defeat the MAGA right. This is what Joe was talking about earlier. This is what you were talking about earlier. You know, we, we have to use the tools that are available to us at this uh, 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 moment. Comrades, the uh, uh, fourth way station on the uh, road to the convention uh, will occur on uh, November 11th and 12th in New York City. It, it will be the convening by our party of a conference of peace activists uh, to come together to discuss uh, what we need to do to um, uh, rethink uh, the rebuilding of the peace movement uh, in this country. It is an, an extremely important uh, issue because the peace movement in many ways is at its weakest point in recent history. And we have to think through what can we do to, to, to help unify it, to help uh, revitalize it, to help bring working class uh, leadership to it, you know? I mean, uh, they're spending a trillion dollars a year on war. The ruling class of this country is more or less united in its foreign policy. They've launched a new Cold War against China, against Cuba, against Nicaragua, against Venezuela against anybody who dares disagree with U.S. foreign policy, you know? Um, and, and, and we have to think about what is it going to take to, to build a movement to change that? Um, and, and it's a very dangerous moment in many respects in our country. Um, do you know that, uh, can you share that, uh, Eight days ago, the New York Times wrote a so-called investigative journalist. Look, look, look at the screen there. Last Saturday, the New York Times wrote an allegedly alleged investigative journalistic article um, advancing the concept that people in the United States, US citizens who were uh, opposing US foreign policy were following the leadership of the Communist Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. You know, um, that, 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 that they weren't able to, to think and act for themselves but were acting as foreign agents of China. Those people had have names. The organizations that Code Pink is one, um, opposing the Biden administration's policy with respect to the Ukraine war. Um, uh, Tricontinental is a third led by our friend and comrade Vijay uh, Prashad. 
Um, and and this was an article that 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 would have made J. Edgar Hoover, uh, Joe McCarthy, Roy Cohn green with envy. You know, um, it's 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 the same uh, charge that was made against our party during the nineteen fifties. You know, that that. We were following the, uh, uh, not only the leadership, but operating under the discipline of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. That we were foreign agents, that we were disloyal, um, uh, that we were, that we were un-American. And, and, and that led to the execution of Julius and Ethel Rosenberg. That's that's what that was about. Our party in this, and we urge everybody to read it and circulate it, condemns this attack by so-called liberal New York Times. Uh, we reject it. We stand with Code Pink and 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 and, and all of those who who are named uh, in in that uh, ugly, nasty, vicious uh, uh, piece. We um, have the capacity. Um, to push back uh, and uh, reverse the uh, red baiting, uh, the China baiting, uh, the uh, Cuba baiting policies that are taking place now. But once again, in order to do that, we have to build a, a mass movement. And, and, and comrades, as, as we go into the convention, uh, we have every reason to believe that uh, we are capable of doing that, not alone, but in concert with the growing militant, uh, progressive, uh, pro-democratic, anti-fascist, anti-MAGA, pro-women, pro-black, pro-Latino, pro-LGBTQ movement that is emerging all across the country. We saw that in, in uh, last year's midterm elections. You know, uh, we saw it in the election uh, a few months ago here in Chicago, which we just spoke about. We saw it in the election in Wisconsin where the state Supreme Court judge uh, defeated her uh, pro-abortion judge, defeated her MAGA opponent by something like 12 points, blew that boy out the box, you know? <laughs> we saw it in Ohio uh, just last week, where once again, you know, people from many different political persuasions came together to defeat a MAGA attempt to restrict uh, democracy. We saw it in Florida. What's the name of that city? Jacksonville. Jacksonville. Donna Deegan defeated the MAGA. It's happening. Oh, we saw it in the Black Lives Matter uprising that occurred two years ago. These, and we're going to see it again on August uh, the 26th in uh, Washington, D.C. Um, and as we march uh, together, comrades, uh, uh, towards our convention, we have every confidence that the confidence that the party is going to be a big part of that movement. And as we said at the end of that convention five years ago, uh, ain't nobody going to stop us uh, from achieving our aims. Donald Trump ain't going to stop us from building this party. Um, DeSantis will not stop us from building this party. 
Um, Lindsey Graham ain't going to stop us from building this party. The uh, red baiters and Cold War mongers and the U.S. State Department are not going to stop us from building this party. The red baiters in the editorial board of the New York Times, they're not going to stop us from building this party. We're going to build it on the East Coast. We're going to build it on the West Coast. We're going to build it North and South. And, and when we get through, we are going to help change the face of the country. So let's go do it. Let's get to it. Long live the Communist Party. Long live the Communist Party. Long live the Labor Commission. Long live the U.S. working class. Thank you.